So, I um, had a bit of a revelation today uh, that I wanted to talk about, about Biden, about Joe Biden. Um, the question is, you know, that's kind of been in my mind is, is why Biden? He wasn't doing very well, and, uh, you know, what's, what's the situation? How did we arrive to this point? Um, again, a lot of the narrative is controlled by the media and how they shift things. They, they gaslight you all the time. That's what they do. Um, so we have to keep our wits about ourselves. We have to sharpen our wits. we got to keep our brains sharpened. We can't fall into those traps. Okay? They're, the corporate media is owned. They are levied by money. That's, 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 what they're, that's what they believe in. They believe in money. They're owned. They're bought and paid for. They have an owner. That owner makes them the mouthpiece of their interest. That's what they do. If several owners, in fact. So, um, back in 2016, uh, Matt Taibbi, fantastic journalist, Matt Taibbi, uh, writes for the Rolling Stone at this point. He has a podcast called Useful Idiots. Highly recommend, with Katie Halper. Highly recommend you all check it out. Uh, Matt Taibbi wrote an article that, uh, you know, remember in 2016 we had a uh, 7,000 Republicans that ran for the uh, for the Republican ticket uh, and uh, he basically wrote like they all tried to put a bunch of energy into you know these never Trumpers these how are we going to get the moderates we need to get these moderates uh, so they pushed people like Jeb Bush John Kasich uh, Ted Cruz Marco Rubio uh, that lady that owned HP I can't remember her fucking name uh, because she didn't make an impact in my head. Uh, if you remember her name, leave a comment below because I'm having a hard time remembering it. But all these people couldn't fucking keep up with Trump. He was the populist within their party. And uh, so they lost. And then they were basically like, well, fuck it. I guess we got to back him. We got to back this candidate. That's what we do. And, and that's what the Republicans do. And the Democrats. Fall in line. Fall in line. You know? And you, you got you got people like Rubio and Paul Ryan that were shitting on Trump during the primaries. Uh, that then came out and was just like, President Trump is a good president. He's, he's our leader. He's uh, the best option we have. Um... He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I mean, I would I would put at least one of his balls in my mouth. Just one for like a little bit. Maybe touch the tip. Just to, just for like a second. I would do it. I'm not gay. No 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 gays though. I'm, I mean, I'm not gay. It's a very heterosexual thing to show that he is the one in charge. It's a power display more than anything. You know. They all fell in line with him, and then people forgot. People forgot. All the fucking Republicans forgot. All these fucking candidates, Rubio, Cruz, Bush, they're all trashing Trump. Same thing happened with this. Uh, The Democratic Party did not know where to put their energy into. And they... um, They put a lot of their energy into a variety of candidates. They attempted with... I mean, they started with Biden. They started with Biden, right? That's where they started. Uh, that wasn't working out. And then they shifted to Elizabeth Warren specifically to try to take votes away from Bernie. I think that was that was specifically why they were doing that. Moved over to Beto for a second when, when some uh, gun reform stuff was going on. Uh, and, uh, and that didn't really work out. They never really said anything about Cory Booker. Uh, they were just like, hey, Cory's here. Did did you know? And then Mayor Pete became the, the shining star. And then Amy Klobuchar became the shining star. And then Bloomberg became the shining star. And then it went back to Amy and Pete. And then they all folded into Biden. Right? But Biden was never really... A front row. Oh, Kamala Harris was in there too. I think Kamala Harris was uh, in the first debate when that's when they were trying to levy her along with Elizabeth Warren. Um, as 
the, the, the powerful women candidates were, you know, um, they all failed. Kamala Harris failed epically thanks to Tulsi Gabbard. Cory Booker was never able to pick up steam. Tom Steyer, unfortunately, also left. He was a weird character, uh, that Tom Steyer. Bloomberg, uh, I don't think Bloomberg was ever meant to be in the race for as long as he spent half a billion dollars, over half a billion dollars to get into that race. To do what? I'm not really sure. Thin out the delegate count, maybe? I'm not, it was, I mean, he ran a bunch of Andy Bernie ads. That's for, that's for damn sure. Racist piece of shit that that guy is. But their energy was dispersed over all these people because they were like, we don't know how to... Because the progressive contingent is basically unifying under Bernie. Has been unified under Bernie. Uh, there's some progressives, I think, that... Some, not all. Uh, I would say a small percentage of pro- progressives are still on board with Tulsi, but I think even if Tulsi doesn't make it, they will they will kind of veer into the Bernie train. Uh, because I think... Because Tulsi Gabbard is a Bernie supporter herself. She... She supported him in 2016, and that's what made her a political outsider. She has a lot of libertarian and conservative support as well because I think um, I think they like the way that she speaks and I think they like the way that she looks. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> some of it has to do with the fact that she's incredibly attractive. I, I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, I feel like some of the conservatives and libertarians make it a bit of a generalization. Some of them, some of them are, are making their decisions with their dicks uh, or their vaginas, whatever. Uh, I'm not here. I don't. I don't care. Right, you know, you, you, you love who you want to love. So, the DNC decided that if you want to get moderates, just like the Republicans were doing that in 2016, they were looking for who's going to get those moderates. Where are we going to get those moderate votes from? Uh, where are we going to get those, those sort of center-right Republicans? They put their chips into Joe Biden. Mayor Pete, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, they all fell in line. Fucking Cory Booker endorsed Joe Biden, and then his girlfriend, uh, Rosario Dawson, came out and said, I voted for Bernie Sanders. (laughs) Oh, Cory. (laughs) Buddy, you can't catch a break, Cory Booker. Boy, you can't catch a break, my friend. You might need to sit the, sit the next four years out, dog. You know, recontemplate some shit. Even your girlfriend didn't support your campaign. Ugh! That's got to be a real blow to the gut, Corey. Oh, buddy. Oh, you got to sit down for the next four years, bud. It's a bad look. Ain't nobody going to respect you for a little while, dog. Just fucking, oh, that last debate that he was in was so sad. Just him being like, please, I need the, I need this. I, my girlfriend is going to vote for Bernie. Please, for the love of, please, I need this. Vote for me. Vote for, fund my campaign. And I, please, God, please. My girlfriend doesn't want to vote for me. Please, please, when we fuck, we have to listen to Bernie Sanders' speeches. Because for the love of, I can't. Every time Bernie speaks, I have an erection now. Please fund my... Please, God, please. Please help me. Please, that was Cory Booker's final little thing. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. But they all folded into Joe Biden. They all folded because he's the centrist candidate that the DNC believes can get those center-right Republicans. Those older folks. You know, that have forgotten about what they used to believe in because they're beaten down by the corporate machine. And now they have to believe in this system. They have to believe in it because because they spent all that time working within it. Oh, but the, the system can't betray me. I'm an old white man. I'm an old white... Uh, the, the, the system can't... No, it can. It will. It has. You have one candidate that won't betray you. And it fucking ain't Joe Biden. 
fucking ain't Joe Biden. They're they're using a Republican tactic. The Democratic National Convention is using a Republican tactic. And you know what's funny is the people that always kind of come out and uh, uh, are like, uh, well, Tulsi Gabbard, I can't support Tulsi Gabbard because she's she's too Republican. You know, she's got a lot of Republican friends, and there's a, there's some Republicanism that that surrounds. I can't do it. Are you going to support the DNC for using the Republican tactic to get Joe Biden? Where are y'all on that? Are y'all going to stick to that hypocrisy? That cognitive dissonance? So you can vote blue no matter who? Try to sift back into complacency? Because there isn't any complacency, baby. Here's a real disappointing one. Fucking Andrew Yang endorsed Joe Biden. Andrew Yang endorsed Joe Biden. Yo, Andrew's Andrew Yang's uh, primary policy point was universal basic income. Joe Biden ain't coming near that shit with a thousand foot foot pole dog you wasted your endorsement Andrew Yang very disappointed very disappointed in that I wonder if the DNC got to him and uh, and, and, and maybe offered him a cabinet position who knows you know um, we just lost Chris Matthews we we just lost Chris Matthews He's still alive, fucking spreading lies about Bernie Sanders, just alone in his goddamn Manhattan penthouse, drinking alone, you know, every so often yelling at a bellhop, just, Bathroom, hang me up in Cell Square, bellhop. They're hanging me up in Cell Square. That's what Chris Matthews is doing. Maybe they offered him that position. Who knows? Maybe Andrew Yang is going to take Chris Matthews' position. As an anchor. I don't know. I mean, these are all conjectures. But it doesn't make any sense. Because the closest person that matched Andrew Yang's policy is probably Bernie Sanders. Maybe Tulsi Gabbard. And Yang didn't endorse either of them. If you're part of the Yang gang, if you're part of the Yang gang and you're watching this video, for fuck's sake, do not vote for Joe Biden no matter what Andrew Yang says. The Yang gang movement has to think for itself. And, and if you believe that automation is going to replace the American worker, if you believe that automation is a bigger problem that the American government is giving credit to, and there's no plan in place, when they start automating jobs, a bunch of people are going to be unemployed, a bunch of people are going to be poor, a bunch of people are going to get fucked over. If you believe all that shit, and you believe that UBI is a, way, a corrective measure to take care of those things, and we need to talk about it, and we need to convince conservatives that are going to lose a bunch of their jobs, if you believe all that stuff, if you believe all that stuff that Andrew Yang talked about, Joe Biden's not your fucking guy. Joe Biden's not your fucking guy. I don't know why Andrew Yang did it. It's very fucking disappointing to see that. Because I liked Andrew Yang. I had some problems with him. I didn't like his military plan. I thought his military plan was not very good. His foreign policies were not very good. He was a little wishy-washy on Medicare for All. Uh, And then he said uh, that he would put Julian Assange on trial. And you know that's not going to be a fair trial. And it's like, bro, ah, man, disappointing to hear that. But okay, I still like you as a person. You still seem like a good person. So why the fuck would you endorse Joe Biden? When the person that matches your policies the most is Bernie Sanders and then Tulsi Gabbard. Even if you didn't want to go, you know. Marianne Williamson endorsed Bernie Sanders. And Marianne Williamson was another fucking political outsider. She didn't give a shit what the DNC was going to do. And she had some stakes, too, because she had a whole department that she wanted to start. Andrew Yang fell in line with the DNC. That's so fucking disappointing. I think... Uh, this is going to split the Yang gang. Uh, I think I think half of them probably going to. Uh, well, I, I would I would say I, I would say a good 
third of them will probably end up going to vote for Biden because, you know, well, Andrew Yang said so kind of thing. Um, and then the rest of what's left, the 66%, split down the middle. Um, you know, you got a third going to Tulsi and a third going to, to Bernie. Um, and uh, that's probably what will happen, in my, in my opinion, if I can wager a conjecture out here. Uh, but um, going forward, I, d I don't know if I can support Andrew Yang based on this decision. This, this, might, this might have been the nail in the head for me. Sorry, Yang Gang. Sorry, people that, that, that believe in the Yang Gang. Uh, and if you're watching this video, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, this, is, this one's it. You know, Andrew Yang comes out. I don't know if I can trust it anymore. You know, I, 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 did, I did believe that he was a pretty decent person. I had some disagreements with, with some of the stuff he said. I really liked the UBI. I really liked his drug policy. I really liked the way that he spoke. I believe, I believe that he was a very passionate human being that really wanted the best for us. Uh, and, uh, and he fell in line with the DNC, and I got to question what they offered him. I'm very disappointed. I'm sorry, Yang Gang. I'm very disappointed in this decision. So why Biden? Why was it all funneled into Biden? I think it was funneled into Biden because he's the easiest one to control. Uh, Mayor Pete's pretty easy to control too because he's kind of a blank slate. Uh, and, this, and a lot of State Department, former CIA and U.S. Sec US Treasury Department people were, were all uh, interested in him and funding him and supporting him and stuff. Uh, so I think if, if we're looking at a, a Biden presidency, you're looking at... Uh, Hey, you know, now that Yang has endorsed him, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, we were talking about possible Biden uh, VPs, uh, uh, you know, last week. Uh, it might be Andrew Yang now. It might be Andrew Yang now. Andrew Yang might, might, might get the VP spot, which is very, very disappointing. The reason why I think Biden was chosen is because of his mental health. I'm not trying to make a joke of it. I know I've uh, made a couple statements about it in the past. Genuinely speaking, though, uh, I do think that this is, a, this is a man that's not doing well. I've, I've been saying this for quite some time, saying this since last year, since his performances at the debates. Um, but that's why. I think Biden's mental health is being used as a control mechanism for the deep state for the military and the DNC and corporate interests. Um, he's not doing well. I think he's got dementia, for sure. Uh, and now what's interesting is the, when people talk about his mental health and people say like, oh, well, he's not able to speak. He's not able to complete a, a full sentence. He doesn't, he, he confuses his wife and his sister. He's, his eyes are bloodshot, he's you know, yelling at people and freaking out at people coming out saying they want him to champion progressive policies and so on, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, you can't talk about that anymore. You can't bring up his mental health anymore. Well, they're trying to erase that narrative. They're trying to get rid of the dementia narrative. They're trying to get rid of the fact that I think he has very legitimate mental health issues, very legitimate cognitive issues. And they're trying to erase that so, you, so people don't see it, don't talk about it. And they go, well, CNN didn't tell me that. I think they're very specifically trying to do this. It's dangerous. It's concerning. Um, and I think he's going to be used uh, as a control mechanism. The other, the other factor is Obama nostalgia. Okay. Uh, and this will not save us. This will not... Hey, if you're a liberal and you're watching this, if you're pro-Biden and you're watching this, okay? And if you're not pro-Biden and, and you know somebody that is pro-Biden that said that they'd vote for him, uh, send him this video. Fuck it. Send him this video, right? Uh, here's the thing. Uh, Obama nostalgia won't save us. It won't let you go back to complacency. It won't let you go back to sleep. It won't mean that you won't have to care about people you don't know. 
Okay? Your, your, your moment of complacency was done. It's over. It's over because it existed in the first place. You have to start caring about other people now. That's what needs to happen. It's not going to save us. It's not going to get better. The Obama administration is what gave us Trump. There has been a long history of this coming. More corporate deregulation. More wars. Less health care. Income inequality. Crippling the middle class. All of that has led specifically to Trump. Led to a billionaire populist. So stop trying to say that it's going to come back because of Obama. Because Biden was connected to Obama. It ain't. Okay? Obama wasn't great. Largest surveillance state handed over to Trump. More drone warfare handed over to Trump. Bailed out the banks. Created a, this, this, you know, economic boom for rich people. Handed it to Trump. And Trump just redefined what poverty was. If you are a leader, you need to have some foresight. You need to figure out how to put protective measures in place for your progressive policies. Joe Biden is not going to do that. Joe Biden doesn't even want to do progressive policies to begin with. Obama-era politics is one of the reasons why we have Trump. They're erasing a lot of stuff um, that's very negative about Joe Biden. They're not bringing it up in the, in, in the, uh, in the corporate media so people don't see it. Uh, people forget that he's pro NAFTA. You know, uh, Biden is projected to win in in Michigan, which is a which is a blue collar state. It's a very blue collar state. A lot of a lot of auto workers in Michigan, and he's projected to win there. Or, you know, by the time you watch this video, maybe he already has won there. That guy fucked. O- that guy was pro NAFTA, which fucked over that state and its workers. Because we didn't understand what NAFTA was. We didn't understand what it was going to do. We didn't have foresight to think about it. He busted the unions. This narrative is completely ignored. When journalists ask him why he won't support uh, Medicare for All, he freaks out on them. Why, 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 why? There's a meme about it now, right? He kind of just screams at them and he... And he pushes them aside. Uh, threatens to hit people that ask him questions that challenge his beliefs and his votes and his record. Talks down to people still. Talk down to Scott Ritter, UN's weapons inspector, that was trying to prevent us from going to war with Iraq. All of that stuff is, is erased. There was a, uh, a uh, climate change activist that talked to Joe Biden recently about a pipeline. And uh, Joe basically said, you should, I'm not the candidate you should vote for. Go vote for somebody else. This is all getting erased. All this is real. And look, don't let them make you forget history. All of these other Democratic candidates, just like in the Republican Party, they all shit on Joe. Kamala Harris launched an attack on Joe and endorsed him. Mayor Pete launched an attack on Joe and endorsed him. Amy Klobuchar, Kirsten Gillibrand, they all went after him. They all endorsed him. Don't forget that. Sure, oh, we're in a we're in a primary, Krish. We're in a prime. I mean, you're gonna see that sort of stuff. It's a competition. It's fr- it's all friendly fire, you know. It's all friendly. It's all fun and games. Exactly for them. It's all fun and games. For us, it's our lives. For us, it's our lives. Why would someone that vehemently called Joe Biden a racist, like Kamala Harris did? on the debate stage. Endorse somebody that she believes has held her people back. Well, because Kamala Harris has held her people back. Because Kamala Harris was putting on an act during the during the debates.
mask is off, folks. The veil is slipped. We see the game for what it is. That in these primaries, when you have DNC-backed candidates, those DNC-backed candidates on the primaries cannot be trusted. Through and through, they cannot be trusted. Mask is slipped. This is who they really are. They'll fall in line, do what the DNC wants. Joe Biden, in an interview with, uh, um, I think, Lawrence O'Donnell, I think that's his name, Lawrence O'Donnell, MSNBC, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's who it is. Uh, he's a health care, health care is a right, but he won't sign a bill that's going to make that happen. He's, and he makes a big thing about Signing a bill that's going to make health care happen now. Great. Again, health care for whom? We have to be able to afford it. We have to not be in debt because of medical bills. We can't let insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies dictate the prices of health care so that a bunch of middle class Americans that don't make a lot of money and have to work two jobs can't afford the medicine that they need or can't are worried about going to the hospital or taking an ambulance because it's going to cost too much money. Uh, healthcare for who? Healthcare now for who, Joe? Universal healthcare, Medicare for all, that's that's a, that's believing that healthcare is a right and we're going to do something about it. This narrative that the status quo once it's back, it's going to save us. It has to end. Because it will not. The status quo is why we're here. As we move forward, we have to remember our history. We cannot let these corporations and the media companies that represent them shift the narrative and make us forget Let's get our critical thinking back, people. There's a vast amount of knowledge out there, and we have the brain capacity to do it. We really do. The DNC, the corporate media, and all these fucking establishment elites do not want you to remember that. I saw somebody post that Biden is better than Trump. No, he's not. He's never been better than Trump. This is a contest of ego between Trump and Biden. That's what it really is. It's a contest of egos. So, if you want to vote for uh, a bloated ego, then you vote for Trump. If you want to vote for... Um, ego riddled with dementia, you vote for Biden, because that's what Biden is. He's a very egotistical man. He's got, he's, I'm pretty sure he's got their uh, dementia, and his uh, mental health is eroding, which is going to be used and capitalized on by uh, the DNC and, uh, and all of their surrogates. So, uh, yeah, pay attention. Keep your, keep your ears to the pulse. You know, may, help people remember. Talk to them. Okay, you remember remember when Kamala Harris called him a racist? Remember when Cory Booker called him a racist? Remember how he signed those bills that blocked civil rights movements? Hmm. Remember that crime bill he wrote that put a whole bunch of black people in prison? Hmm. You really think that he's better than Trump? You really think Biden is better than Trump because of all that? Help people remember. Hey folks, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, if you enjoyed the topics we discussed in this in this video, 
Uh, there's a very good chance that you will enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I am on tour all across the country, you guys. Uh, I am going to be recording my brand new album uh, at uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. on March 20th. Uh, Williamsport on March 21st and at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival on March, uh, April 2nd through the 4th. Uh, I also have live stand-up comedy dates uh, that I will be working on a new show after the recording uh, with a bunch of brand new material. Uh, I'm coming to Baltimore, Maryland. I'm coming to Tarentum, PA. Uh, I'm also going to be in Cincinnati, Louisville, Knoxville, Tennessee, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Richmond, Virginia, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I'm, I'm coming all over the place. I'm going to be I'm going to be doing a, a bunch of tour dates in the next few months. Uh, but I'm also opening for my good friend Lee Camp on his book release tour. Uh, he released a new book called Bullet Points and Punchlines. If you get a VIP ticket for any of these shows, you get a free copy of the book and a USB uh, of his comedy special. Uh, so make sure you grab tickets to come see us. We're going to be in Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina. Two shows in Asheville, North Carolina, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we are also going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, coming to uh, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Ottawa, Ontario. We're going to be uh, going all across the country. So make sure you grab your tickets. Go to ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Check out the details for the show. You can check out my entire tour schedule there as well to see if I'm coming to a city near you on a solo tour or with Lee. It'll be great to see you guys out at these live shows. Come by, say hello, you know, uh, have, have a drink, uh, discuss some esoteric topics. Um, and uh, while you're on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, you, you might see some big orange buttons on those pages. Uh, they are sustaining membership buttons. You can, you can become a sustaining member directly on my website. Uh, there are various different tiers with various different rewards. Uh, that helps uh, this show, my uh, other podcast that has a lot more production behind it, Forkful of Noodles, as well as Taboo Table Talk and The Dispatch, as well as live stand-up comedy, the socially conscious, independent DIY comedy that I do. You will be helping uh, support that as well. And another way to become a sustaining member is by joining the Patreon over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Every little bit helps, and patrons get exclusive content uh, that, uh, that, that only the patrons will get. Uh, another way to get exclusive content and become a sustaining member is by going to my Bandcamp page at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That gives you collections of stand-up uh, starting at only five bucks a month. Uh, so make sure you check them out. And if you have the ability to become a sustaining member, if you have the financial resources to do that, awesome. I really appreciate everybody that's already become a contributor, everybody that's already become a sustaining member. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, but another way that you can help this show is by sharing it sending it out to as many folks as you possibly can, sharing it out to groups, sharing it out to your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would find value in a show like this. Uh, and these are, see, these are some of the biggest ways that you can, uh, you can help increase the quantity and quality of these shows and uh, help me put out more content on a regular basis uh, to keep up with, with all of the, the news, talk about big ideas, uh, uh, talk about ideas that you won't hear on the corporate mainstream uh, networks, whether they be journalism or journalism or or comedy. Uh, so the, the the sustaining memberships and sharing are the biggest way because uh, I am getting suppressed. I did recently get censored, um, and uh, and and the way that that uh, you guys can help fight that is 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 through sharing and becoming sustaining members. I really really appreciate you guys watching. And uh, till next time, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.